Hey everybody, it's Elena. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a tag video and this tag is an original tag created by Madman Reads and Rocks. He tagged me in this video um, on October 30th. So yes, it, this is late, um, but I am doing it. So there we go. And let's just get into it because there's the questions are kind of long. Um, and I want to say a little bit about each book, why I chose them for the questions, so let's just get into it. But also, thank you very much for tagging me in this video. I don't ever really get tagged in videos. Um, so, question number one, Dracula. He's a badass with a lot of supernatural abilities and a lot of weaknesses. Name a book you like that contains a lot of plot holes and or uninteresting chapters. Um, for this one, I chose Fierce Kingdom by Jin Phillips because um, I really enjoyed this book. She's an amazing author. Um, I love her writing style and everything, but throughout this book, there are a couple of pages that I felt like were useless information. And I think that it was just um, Jin Phillips' way of developing the characters. Like, there would be two to three um, chapters explaining, like, like, the mother explaining how she grew up and stuff and it's like okay I really just want to get back to the story and understand what's going on because um, this book follows a mother and her son who go to the zoo and something happens when they're about to leave and then they are finding themselves sprinting back into the zoo because they were about to leave and then throughout the whole book they were basically running and hiding so my anxiety was through the roof reading this book and when I had to sit there and read two to three pages of unnecessary information that I didn't care about I was about to DNF this book I was really aggravated but the only reason why I didn't DNF is because I really wanted to know what happened and then the ending wasn't that satisfying for me um, but in the end this was a good book I would recommend it but throughout the book there are those two to three pages of unnecessary information that just drives me insane um, I think I did a review on this book I probably did um, a wrap-up and it's in there I don't remember which one though but I'm sure you can find it um, this book was um, book of the month August so I probably read it in September or maybe I read it in August. I think I actually read it in August because I remember I was like, oh, I could read this in one sitting because I read half the book in one sitting, but then I got stuck with those two or three pages of unnecessary information and I um, didn't read it for like three days or something like that because I just couldn't get myself to pick it up again. But I actually finished it and it was really good. Um, number two, The Wolfman. He's super strong and super aggressive. Name a book that grabbed your attention from beginning to end and left you feeling scared or scarred. I think that's scared. Um, I was originally going to pick Big Little Lies because that book had my attention throughout the whole entire book. I read it really slowly because I enjoyed it so much. I, I can't even remember the last time I read a book that I enjoyed that much. But then I thought about it. I just read um, for Spookathon, A Stranger in the House by Sherry Lapina. And this book grabbed me from the first sentence all the way to the ending, and that ending left me so scarred. Like, I was like, whoa, I never saw that coming, but, oh, I, I knew that the lady at the ending had something to do with the whole, you know, story somehow, but I just thought it was insane. And let me just read you the first sentence. And I mean, it's the first sentence of the prologue, but that does count because you have to read the prologue in order to get to chapter one, um, cause it's part of the story, but it says she doesn't belong here. That's the first sentence. And then the next sentence after that, she bolts out the back door of the abandoned restaurant, stumbling in the dark. Most of the lights are burned out or broken, her breath coming in loud rafts, and then, you know, it goes on. But it's just so... It just captures you, and then throughout the book it just keeps you, because you just want to know what happened, and I would highly recommend this book too. It's considered a thriller. Um, it wasn't really that thrilling for me, but that's just because I am a thriller slash horror reader, so I've read worse. But um, this was really good. I'd highly recommend it as well. Um, so yeah, let's move on. Um, number three, Frankenstein's Monster. He's composed of many different body parts and therefore finds it difficult to being accepted by most of the society. Name a book that tackles more than one important topic and is not well liked by everyone. Um, so honestly, I couldn't think of a book that, um, 
followed under this like originally I was gonna say it by Stephen King because it does deal it does talk about like racism and stuff and I mean that book was written like way back in the days where racism was like that and that it was okay for them to talk the way they did in the book um so I understand why a lot of people don't like that like if you if a person like if a millennial today read it I can understand why they would probably be offended by it but you also have to think that it was written back in the days where that was okay but instead I chose The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg because I haven't really ever seen anybody else read this book um, and the majority of the book is about habits obviously but he does tackle a lot of topics um, like subtopics that have to do with habits and though I love this book I found it very interesting I can see why other people probably wouldn't because um, it's like a more educational book than it is for fun and I it, this was a required read for my English class um, but I really loved this book and I would so reread it again I'm so glad that they chose this book because it really did teach me a lot so this was really good if somebody didn't like this book I wouldn't really understand why except for the fact that it does tackle a lot of topics and I wouldn't recommend reading it as a required read because that made it even harder to read it because I read because I like to and to enjoy books when somebody tells me you have to read this book by a certain deadline that makes it harder for me um, except if it's like an arc or something because that's different then I'm reading to help out an author but anyway let's move on that's another topic um, Okay, the mummy. He's dead and wrapped in, wrapped up in gauze, yet he's somehow still kind of scary. Name a book that you feel has a boring beginning, but a very interesting ending. So for this one, I chose Welcome to Camp Nightmare by R.L. Stein. It's a Goosebumps book. I chose this book because in the beginning, it's just explaining how these children are on their way to the camp. Um, and that's kind of not really interesting to me, but then the ending was insane and it went in a completely different direction that I would have ever saw it going. So um, I loved this book. It was really interesting and I'm so glad that I read it. I read this part of the Goosebumps along um, and I really enjoyed it. It was really good. Um, but that ending though, that was insane. I just never would have saw that coming. Moving on, The Invisible Man. He's easy to lose track of and easy to forget about. Name a book that you believe is underrated and or in danger of being forgotten. So underrated and in danger of being forgotten, I would say Speak by Laurie House Anderson. Laurie House Anderson. Um, I'm currently rereading this book. I've read it probably seven plus times. I can't even count how many times I've read this book, but I love it so much. And um, I would highly recommend this book to everyone. I feel like it needs to be read because it just, oh, I feel like a lot of females can probably relate to this. Um, not saying that males shouldn't read it because they should too. I mean, maybe you would understand like what we go through. Um, but this follows a character named Melinda. Something um, drastic happens to her at a party with all of her friends. Like she's in, she was in middle school or about to be in high school at this party. Um, something happens at the party, um, she calls the cops and the party gets ruined. Um, so then when she goes into ninth grade high school, no, none of her friends are her friends anymore and she goes through like a, a whole bunch of crap, like basically bullying and stuff, you know, the basic high school tropes that are in books and movies. Um, but so, yeah, so it just follows her how she's a very how now she's a very quiet, fragile child, and it follows her story, how she opens up and grows, and it's so beautiful, and I think that it needs to be read. It's a little under um, 200 pages, like it's not even 200 pages yet. I think it's like 190 something. I don't know. Um, and this is the, yeah, it's 197. And this is the Platinum Edition, so it has a discussion with the author in the back, which I haven't ever read, and I plan on reading it this time. But I love this book so much and I felt like I needed to reread it because I've been telling myself I want to reread it. And I've currently saw people on the book page that I follow that there were a couple of people reading this for the first time and I was like, oh my gosh, you're reading this for the first time? You're gonna love it. So I was like, I gotta reread it because I just need to. And then there's also a movie and Christian Stewart from Twilight plays Melinda and she plays Melinda so great. Melinda's the main character in case I didn't say that. 
Um, next question, sorry for my babbling, I'm just really passionate about that book. I read it in middle school and I um, can actually relate to Melinda um, a little bit from what she goes through, which I'm not going to spoil anything, but if you read it, then you'll understand what I'm saying. So moving on, number six, create, cre creator, creature from the Black Lagoon. He's amphibious and looks like a cross between a fish and scuba diver, but he can be pretty creepy when he wants to be. Name a book that creeped you out or made you cringe more than once. So I definitely didn't hesitate picking this book off my chef, shelf, chef, oh god, shelf, <laughs> The Grip of It by Jack Jemick. Um, well, you guys know I read horror books and thriller books, so when I was really creeped out by this book, I was really surprised because literally I couldn't sleep with my lights off. Like, I, I had to light my candle and that's how I had to go to sleep. You know, I just couldn't, I don't know why this book creeped me out that much, but it was so good and I would highly recommend it as well. Um, it's just, it's crazy. I'm just gonna say, um, it's about a newly married couple who buy a house together and then some creepy stuff starts happening in the house and that's all I'm gonna say. I would highly recommend it. So it's, I think it's, um, considered a horror novel, I think. Um, it wasn't that scary though, I guess. Well, I couldn't sleep with the lights off so I guess it was kind of scary. Anyway, moving on. Um, I'd still recommend it. Number seven, Phantom of the Opera. He wears a mask and a cape, but he's no superhero. Name a book that led you to believe it was just another ripoff of others like it, but ultimately ended up being something quite unique. Um, so for this, I couldn't really think of anything except for the fact that I recently watched a movie called Happy Death Day, and that movie is a, it follows the female main character who it's her birthday and somebody keeps killing her so she keeps reliving the day over and over again and trying to figure out who killed her so if you've read this book or even seen the movie adaptation of this book then you know exactly what i'm talking about it is literally the same thing as before i fall except for the fact that before i fall is like um Happy Death Day is a horror version of Before I Fall, but Happy Death Day is just a movie. Before I Fall was originally a book and then adapted into a movie. They're basically the same thing, except, hi dogs, except for the fact that, um, what was I going to say? I don't even remember. But they are unique, so I will say, because it says, um, you felt like it was a ripoff, but it ultimately ended up being something quite unique. So they are both, they both end very differently. Um, Happy Death Day was really funny. I really enjoyed it. I'd recommend the movie. It wasn't really scary or anything, so you could watch that and then read this book and watch the movie adaptation. I haven't read this book. I watched the movie first because my family was watching it and I was like, oh, hey, I have that book and I wanted to watch the movie with them. So I liked the movie. The only thing that I thought was really annoying is the fact that they keep reliving their life over and over again and I think if it was me I'd be so frustrated like I wouldn't know what to do but they're basically the same story except one is horror and one is not and at the well I guess I can't really say what happens at the end because that would be spoiling both books but the endings are fairly different as well so that's the book I chose for that because I couldn't think of anything else that fell under um that question but anyways Moving on, if you could be a monster, who or what would you be? Um, I don't know, I guess Dracula. I've, since I was little, I always thought I was a vampire because my, uh, my canines are very sharp and they were really sharp when I was younger, so I always thought I was a vampire. So I guess I would be happy with being a vampire, except I would want to be a vampire that can go out in sunlight. I don't want to be an ugly vampire like from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. They're very ugly, um, except for Angel. He's, he's really beautiful. But anyway, even in his vampire state, he's really good looking. But anyway, I, I don't want to be a Twilight vampire either, one that like, sparkles in the daylight because I don't want to be... You can't go out in the daylight then. If you sparkle or if, you know, you're gonna combust, it just doesn't work. So I would like to be maybe like a vampire from like, I guess Blade, cause I think Blade was half vampire, half human. So I would like to be like him. That would be awesome cause he is badass. 
And then last but not least, spread the monster love, tag some people. So I'm not going to say who I'm going to tag, I'm just going to link them down below. Um, if you're not tagged in this video but you want to do it, I definitely suggest you do because these questions are really interesting and they definitely get you thinking. Um, it took me a while to decide what books to pick off my shelf. I honestly haven't read a lot so it's really hard for me to do tag videos or I don't own most of the books that I have read so it's a little difficult for me to do tag videos. I need to start reading more honestly. Um, but that being said, thank you so much Mad Men Reads and Rocks for tagging me in this video. I really enjoyed it. Um, and so now I'm gonna go so that I can tag people and edit this video and all that good stuff. And I'll see you next time with another video. Bye!